this video, I'm going to show you an app that will make managing your Gmail endlessly easier. So I know this is going to offend a lot of people, but I do not like Gmail. Now there's a few reasons for this. Probably at the top of the list for me is I'm not really a big fan of some of the privacy aspects of Gmail. Some of the tracking that goes on and the fact that you're just kind of entrusting all of your email, all of your calendars, all of your contacts to a single company. Now I do realize that in some ways it is convenient and again it's great to just have free email but I just kind of prefer to pay for my email if for no other reason than having the peace of mind that knowing that they're going to be dedicated to supporting me if and when something ever goes wrong. Nevertheless, I do have a Gmail account. Part of that has to do with just some of the Google tools and apps that I do actually have to use such as YouTube. But what that means is that I do have Gmail and it is probably wise for me to keep that Gmail organized for the very few emails that come through there, whether they're notifications or whether they're, you know, receipts or invoices or rarely an email from an actual person. But that brings us to the next thing that I really, really do not like about Gmail and that is its UI and its organization. So I've talked about in the past, my favorite email client and service is a service called Hey, I will leave a link in the description to a video where I walk you through a little bit about my favorite features of using Hey email. But part of the reason I like Hey is because it is very productivity oriented, right? It isn't just this giant inbox that just has a cluster of a ton of different emails ranging from notifications to newsletters. So part of why I find myself dreading even the idea of opening gmail.com is knowing, first off, I don't keep it very organized. And second off, it takes a lot of time to keep it organized, particularly when most of the mail in Gmail, at least for me, is junk mail. However, you like so many other people out there, may and probably rely upon Gmail for all of your email, which like I mentioned earlier, there's reasons why that makes sense. So as I decided I wanted to start using my Gmail and getting it more organized at least so that when I check it, it's actually usable, I determined that it would be helpful if I had some kind of tool that would make Gmail just a little bit easier to use. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you an app that completely transforms the UI and usability of Gmail to make it endlessly more efficient and easy to use, especially if Gmail is something that you use for work. Okay, so here is my Gmail in all of its glory. And you might see the first email, which is a little bit of foreshadowing <laughs> the particular tool that we're going to be using, but it is just a complete mess. So we've got the primary tab, the promotions and the social. And one of the biggest problems that I have with Gmail is that, like I said, it's just this giant long list of just emails that you have to deal with. You can star them if you need to. You can even bulk select or do whatever. But from an organizational and productivity standpoint, in my personal opinion, Gmail is just kind of a disaster. So that's why I was fortunate enough to find an email client by the name of Spark. So once you log in, you can just go ahead and check your inbox. It gives you this nice little splash screen. And the cool thing is that Spark doesn't just work with Gmail. It works with a wide variety of different email services out there. I just think that Gmail is probably the most common. But one of the things I really like about Spark amongst many other things is, well, first off to connect your Gmail account, all you have to do is just, you know, use their simple login. All you got to do is just connect your Gmail account to Spark and it automatically sets everything up for you. But one of the things you'll notice once you get to the main inbox from within Spark is that it starts splitting things up for you in a pretty effective way, in my opinion. So first off is it does a pretty good job of distinguishing between notifications and newsletters. And then for things that it maybe isn't sure whether it's a notification or a newsletter, it goes in here and it splits it up by month. So as you can see here, uh, it's God goes pretty far back and I have quite a few things that I would need to manage. Now, typically what I would have to do is if I was in regular Gmail, I'd have to go through email by email, checking individually to make sure whether or not it is something that I need. And then if it's not archiving it, I'm pretty sure most of these things I don't need, but the fact that it actually splits these up for me makes life a lot easier. So I'll go ahead and close that. 
but this is you know all of your notifications and you can just do a quick scroll through here and you can pretty much instantly know that i don't really need to check each and every one of these notifications if i had needed to have checked these the time to do so probably is long past. But the cool thing about Spark is that it treats your email a little bit more like a to-do list. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to, you can do this individually. You can go through each email and start checking them off. And essentially what this is doing is archiving these in Gmail. So what we're going to do, we already know all these notifications are long past their use. So we're just gonna click done to all of them. And as you can see, it takes me back to the main page which has no notifications because they've all been checked off. Now, if at any point in time I want to go back and see everything, including the things that have been checked off, I can just toggle this on and I can go back and I can see those really easily. But the same thing applies to newsletters. I already know that time is long since past since I need to see all these newsletters. I can check them off if I want to. I don't, so we'll mark them all as done. We still have a few items here, as you can see, but the cool thing is that I can just go through these individually, give them a quick look, just read a quick little line from them to see if there's something I need. I'm just going to click these as I'm skimming them. There we go. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. That's old. Don't need it. And there you go. I've gone through hundreds of emails and they're all organized. Now you might be saying, okay, oh, you really did which you went through and you could have technically in Gmail have just selected all those emails and then just archived them. True, but this is nice because it shows you line by line, category by category, if this is a newsletter, if this is a notification or whether this is a regular email. So you can get a pretty good glimpse, bird's eye view, of whether or not this group of emails is something that you should pay attention to, like those last groups I was going through line by line. I knew that those were things I needed to archive, but for many of you using Gmail, you may not. So, so this just helps you get the notifications and the other stuff out of the way so that you can organize the things that you do need. The other things you'll notice in here is that you'll have pins. So you'll have things that, you know, you can go in here. This is essentially like starring a message. And you have your drafts. This is something I can go ahead and trash. Don't need it anymore but you can save your drafts here, but it's very compact. It's very clean. It's got dark mode uh, built in. We've got all of these. Uh, we've got all of these uh, sent messages. You got the trash and it's got this nice little good afternoon. Welcome home screen. But like I mentioned, if you ever want to go back and see any of the emails that you have archived, all you got to do is check this button and then go through it. And then of course they've got a nice little simple search feature built in as well, but it's simplicity helps you stay focused on the emails that you need to. They've got a wide variety of different options that you can go through and do. You can add multiple accounts if you want to. I'm not going to go through all of these. What I just wanted to do first is just kind of give you some of the cool, some of the more useful tools, in my opinion, you can create templates, which are pretty nice so that you can, you know, if you got the same type of email that you're sending over and over again, you can do that. It does have some AI integration. I don't personally use that, but if you're somebody who likes AI to help craft or change some of your emails, you can do that and it makes, and that's a pretty useful tool. Here's some more details about Sparks AI and how it works within the client. The only things that I tend to mess with a decent amount is the appearance. I prefer dark mode, which my system already defaults to. And I changed mine by default. It's going to be on compact. I changed mine to expanded just because I like the ability to see the first line of an email. So I like to see the intro to the email so that I can get a quick bird's eye view of whether or not it's an email I need to open now or later just beyond seeing the headline or the subject of the. The only other option I do find myself using as well is under the composer. I do like to set a signature. So I do not have one in this Gmail account. I do have a different work Gmail account, which I have one set, but it is nice to be able to create signatures. You can create a default one. And then they also have an option here within signatures to display, to display the sent with spark tagline. I typically turn that off just because I don't really like telling the people who I'm sending email to what email client I'm using because it's not really that important to them, but you can also turn that off and then you can create multiple signatures that you can assign for various uses 
or purposes. But if we were to jump back into my Gmail account, you can see that all of those emails are now gone and they should be down here under all mail. So you can, you can rest assured that none of your emails are gone. They're only archived. And then you can go back to using this nice clean little client to keep your Gmail clean and organized. And then when it comes to composing, all you have to do is just click this nice little pencil icon. This is another thing that I really like about this tool over just using Gmail by default. It's got a nice clean writing experience. So you can just say here is email. You can just click to add the CC and BCC if you need to. And then you just start typing. It's just so clean, so easy to use. You can use a little bit of markdown so that it does the auto formatting for you. But here is a bullet and then there you go. You're just off and running. And then you just click this button once you're ready to send it. Like I said, super easy to use. You can even schedule it later if you need to. And it's a great writing and user experience. And in my personal opinion is far better than Gmail's default web browser experience. So Spark by default is free. However, what you'll notice is that they're going to want you to create an account uh, with them if you want to use all the premium features. And I couldn't break down for you all the ones that are premium and which aren't. I personally use Spark as a member of SetApp, which you, if you're a regular of this channel, you are well familiar with SetApp. SetApp is just a subscription service that includes a ton of different Mac apps, one of them being Spark Mail. So in here, you'll be able to install and activate Spark. And to my understanding, has all of the features that are included with the premium version. So I don't, I haven't come across an issue where I feel like some of the features aren't unlocked. Like I said, I, I don't use Gmail a whole lot, but when I do, I definitely use Spark to manage it. But if you're more of a power user and you rely heavily upon Gmail, you'll probably have to dive in to see if it has within SetApp all of the features that you need and they're all unlocked. But from what I can tell, they are. I haven't seen any, any indication that all of the features aren't included. So it works great. And the great thing about SetApp, again, is that you have a ton of Mac apps at your fingertips, uh, not only Spark, but a lot of the other tools and resources that we've talked about on this channel. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I'm going to leave links in the description, both to Spark as well as to another video that I've done in the past about Hey Email, which I think is a great alternative. But again, if you have to use Gmail, like I said, gotta use it for work, or if you've gotta use it for personal or whatever it is, Spark hopefully it will make your life a lot easier. But as always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.